All right, let's dig down deep into one of the most useful tasks, one of my favorite tasks, the execute SQL task. Okay, so I love SQL. It's no secret if you've watched any of my DBA or programming or queries or anything classes. I love writing SQL, and so it's just a natural fit for me. Now, we took a look at the execute SQL task back in Chapter 4. It's time to take it a little bit further. In Chapter 4, what we looked at was pretty much a static interpretation of the execute SQL task. How to execute a stored procedure uh, that either had no parameters or in which you provided literal values for the parameters. There was no dynamic aspect to what we saw in Chapter 4. So what we want to do, now that we've learned a little bit about variables, we want to bring those into working with them with the execute SQL task so that we can have dynamic queries, dynamic stored procedures, dynamic code. Okay, we need to play. Um, let's, uh, let's do this. So let's use the AdventureWorks database. Uh, Person.contact. Um, Let's do, I'm going to stick with our human resources department name because there's just nothing fancy about it. And I like nothing fancy when we're dealing with SSIS demos. Uh, so uh, let's do this. I'm going to show you how to parameterize this query. Now, in SQL, if we were to parameterize a query, we would do something like this, right? Um, Declare department ID, we want that, where department ID, uh, oops, where department ID oops, equals that. Okay, kind of get the idea, just a parameterized query, right? Uh, maybe if you, if you like your code looking like that, that's fine too. Uh, the idea is we're simply not embedding a literal right there, we are parameterizing it with a variable. We can do the same thing inside the execute SQL task. So let me bring in an SSIS package. And let's do this. So go to my toolbox, grab an execute SQL task. I'm trying to think of a way to easily show this to you. Um, Okay, here's what I'll do. Uh, I think this will actually work. Um, you can see right here that the name of department ID 5 is purchasing. We want to change this name based on the parameters. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a stored procedure called update department. And it accepts an incoming department ID and an incoming name, so new name. I guess that's probably a 128. I'm not going to exceed that. And it just says update human resources dot department set name equal new name where department ID equals department ID. Let me just focus on this so you can see. Is there really anything fancy about it? No. Is this probably a stored procedure that you'd see? Ah, you know, not really. Not in this given example. But what I want to show you how to do is to pass parameters in through the execute SQL statement. Okay? So we're going to be able to pass in the new parameter for department ID. So let's create it. And let's go over here to our execute SQL task. And we want to execute that stored procedure. So I need to make a new connection. I want to connect to SQL Server, so I use OLADB. New connection, delete whatever's there. Local host. You're wondering why does he delete whatever's there? Just to not confuse you. In the real world, I would not delete them. I would keep them and just reuse them but just so that it doesn't confuse somebody who is just stepping into this video for the first time. Okay, uh, the SQL statement that I want to populate is dbo dot something. What did I call it? Update department. 
Okay, very good. You're happy? We run. Some of you are shaking your heads going, why didn't he put the parameters in? Just to show you that if we execute it without putting the parameters, we get an error message. It fails. Uh, we see that it expects the parameter department ID, which was not supplied. The parameters that we provided in Transact SQL for our stored procedure are required parameters. They don't have default values. So we have to provide them. Cool. So, come up here, and we can hard code them, right? So I could say at department ID equals five comma at name equals new name, um, maybe to kind of make it look prettier, I'll do this. Okay, so you could see that we are assigning the value of the parameters. And I, I'm kind of going the long way to show you this to make sure everybody gets it. This is not parameterized, right? These are literal values, five and new name. We typed them in. Hey, that looks great, Scott. Way to go. <laughs> okay. Okay. And uh, we get an error message here. What did I do? Oh, new name. That's my fault. I, I just made it at name. So it needed to be at new name. Some of you might be wondering, can't you? Do you have to put those parameter names in there? No, you can do it by ordinal position as well. Okay, so we're good. It ran. Let's just verify that it ran. Select all from humans dot departments, and let's look at number five. And sure enough, it made the new name change. Yay. <laughs> Okay, well, let's get into the parameterization part, the variable piece of this. So here's what I want to do. Instead of actually hard coding these values into the execute SQL task, let's do some variables. So I'm going to make a variable. And this is actually harder than you might think. And I'm going to name my variable department ID, give it a package scope. I need to match the .NET type to the SQL type. It turns out that the SQL type is an integer, I mean a small integer. We saw that in the previous video. And so I need to make this an int 16. And I'm going to set the value to be freeze. Now what happened? Why? Um, a new name, that's a string. And we're going to say, oh, um, set in variable here and it's, I can't change the value of the int 16 so remember our getters and setters uh, you see what it just did it changed it to db null when I moved off of it huh. um, there we go was I crazy I was trying to do int 16 and it wasn't letting me change it right so I was gonna have to go use my script task to set the value I think it had it set somehow to db null. I think that was a little bug. Uh, so we'll set it to 5. Okay. And so here's the tricky part of the execute SQL task. When you come over here, what do we do? How do I parameterize this statement? And the answer is it depends. First off, can you parameterize this statement? The answer is not yes. The answer is, it depends, <laughs> okay? Not all providers will support parameterized queries. SQL Server does, Oracle does, Access, Excel, your main ones, but not every one of them do. So you probably are cool doing it, but not all of them. So first you've got to figure out whether yours supports parameterized queries. The only way I know to do that is either looking in the documentation or trying it. If it doesn't work, <laughs> then it doesn't support them. Now, the second thing you have to say is, okay, now that I know my provider supports parameterized queries, how? what's the syntax? Well, the syntax, you know, I could give you the easy answer. Go look it up in Books Online. <laughs> it's in there. Um, if you will, I'll show you how to get there. If you want to read later, you can. 
but I'm really here to kind of show you. Uh, but so you click help down here and what you're looking for is this part right here working with parameters and return codes in the execute SQL task. Now I don't know if in the version of books online you have it will have that there. Uh, that's what I get. I'm on the I think I'm on service pack one. So I click that and down here it talks about all the parameters, how you do it, depending, notice on what your connection is, you're going to have different what we call markers and how you define them. You've got that as secondary information. I'm going to basically show you how it works. If you want more information, that's all you have to do to kind of dig down into it. Okay, so I'm using OLADB. The thing to know about OLADB is that it requires question marks as the parameter marker. So that is in your SQL code what is a parameter. Let me show you. So over here, question mark, question mark. These are the parameter markers, and that is how you have to do it if you're using any of the OLADB providers. That's strictly how it has to go. I'm going to show you next video how to do the ADO.net side of things because it is a little bit different. So here's what we see. Now let me, we're not done because this is actually pretty important. This is parameter zero and this is parameter one. Okay, so the parameter number is simply the ordinal position that it appears in the SQL statement. Cool. So I say okay. I go to the parameter mapping and I have to deal with this screen. This screen will um, pester you a good deal. So I say add and I want to take the variable uh, department ID. I want it to be an input parameter, meaning that before the statement executes, there will be replacement of that parameter marker with the value of the department ID variable. I choose my data type, which is just so goofy uh, here that yet again we're presented with another data type here. Uh, so I choose my data type and the parameter name needs to be zero because that's the first parameter in the file. Would be nice if from a usability standpoint we had a little parse and provide parameters button guys. Uh, I say the next one is, I just click add, I choose the department, uh, the new name, uh, the type of this is now a string and so you get into the idea of, you know, is it an in car, a var car, in char, var char, however you want to say it. And this one becomes parameter name one. So what we're doing is because here this is zero and this is one, that's how we're going to map these guys up. And so if this is successful, let's just see what it should be. It should be for department ID five, the new value should be set in variable. Right now in the database it is new name. So let's execute and we get green back which is a good thing and sure enough we get the set in variable. So the key takeaway from this is any of your OLADB connections are going to use this ordinal position based question mark type of syntax. Okay, this being 0, 1. You could have a whole list of 50. It doesn't have to be a stored procedure. This could be a, a, a little insert statement like this. You could have, you know, insert my table and you could say values and you could just build a list of question marks. I mean, that's, that's really how you work with it. This is the old SQL Server 2000s uh, syntax. We had this same type of thing. So if you understood how the execute SQL task worked in SQL 2000, it's the exact same thing when you're working with the, the OLADB. 
Now I tell you what we're going to do, we're going to come back and in the next video I want to show you how to do ADO and ADO.net.